Last week I released a video on how to set up a number four bench plane to be a smoother and it was a big hit. You guys really liked it. And I got a bunch of questions that ranged from how to tune a plane to which plane should I buy. And so I'm going to be doing a hand plane series where we're going to talk about different kinds of hand planes, how to tune them up and that kind of thing. But first I want to talk about which hand planes you should buy, what are most important, what are sort of novelty or not needed and sort of fun to have and where you should start and work on your collection. This is a collection I've been working on for a few years and there's some that I really want to replace, some that I really don't like, some that I love and I wanted to talk about them with you and the different types of hand planes and what they're for. I wanted to start by kind of quickly going over all of them and what they were and then we'll talk about which ones I think you should buy first and then which ones you should buy after that. So starting uh, over here on the left I have a violin maker's plane which nobody needs unless you're a violin maker but it's super cute and a fan of the show gave it to me so I thought I'd include it. Then I have a rabbit plane which is actually a three-in-one plane that can be switched from a chisel plane to a bullnose plane to a rabbit plane pretty easily. I have two different block planes, a low angle block plane and then a rabbiting block plane. Uh, two number threes here, I have one set up as a scrub plane and one as a smoothing plane. Uh, a number four, which the adjustment lever is busted, but I, I use occasionally. A uh, number four smoother by Stanley, a number four smoother by Lee Nielsen. Uh, a five and a half by, I think, Grizzly, I don't know, it was a cheap one I got when I first got started, but works actually amazingly well. Uh, a Stanley Sweetheart low angle jack plane, a Lee Nielsen low angle jack plane, a Bailey number six that I refurbished from Stanley. And then again, I think this was maybe a Grizzly hand plane or something. Uh, again, a cheap number seven that I bought when I first got started. And then of course I have a Lee Nielsen router plane here. So first I wanted to talk about bevel up versus bevel down, low angle versus standard angle. So your low angle planes like these two jack planes, this smoother, both of these block planes, the frog angle is at about 12 degrees and then you sharpen it to 25 degrees, giving you an attack angle of 37 degrees, 37 and a half degrees. And that is great for smoothing and for kind of straight grained woods. Uh, it, it, they do a phenomenal job and you can open and close the mouths on the low angles and control your chip removal speed and that kind of thing. Uh, whereas kind of your standard frog angle is gonna be great all around plane. Uh, those are at 45 degrees and then you sharpen to 25 degrees with sometimes a micro bevel of 30 degrees. Uh, those are going to be great for more figured woods and that kind of thing. But usually, you know, there's a reason number four is the most popular plane. It really is a great all around smoother kind of getting quick things done, that sort of thing. The rabbiting block planes are designed for getting right up to an edge and being able to clear material in a corner. And then of course a router plane is designed for what you would use a powered router for, but it's to be used by hand. And then the violin maker's plane is for doing very, very, very detailed work, inlay work, uh, and smoothing in a very, very small area. So let's talk about which ones you should buy. So obviously the first thing you should buy is a low angle block plane. A low angle block plane is the most common plane I use in the shop. I use it for everything. I keep it really sharp. I keep it so it takes really shallow passes unless I'm doing a chamfer on a corner. Uh, you can use it to clean up glue squeeze out. You can use it to clean up any imperfections. If you need to, if you, you know, nicked an area, you can sort of smooth it out with your, your low angle block plane. They're the most versatile thing. I, in fact, I want to make a leather pouch that goes on my vest because I use it so much. I'm always like walking to the other side of the shop to go get it from where I used it last because I never put things back. The other planes that I would get first, if you're, if you're going to buy, if you have to start out and you can only buy three planes, I would get a low angle jack plane, a block plane, and a number four. The reason being a low angle jack plane can be used for light jointing. If you have a really wavy surface over a very long edge, it's gonna be tough to do, but it, it can work. Uh, they're great smoothers for straight grain type stuff, for stuff that's not too figured, whereas you can set up your number four to be a smoother as well. Um, and you can even get another blade for it and put a heavy camber on there and use it as a scrub plane. Uh, but if you're gonna start with three planes, 
use, I would get these three, the block plane, the number four, and the low angle jack. Now, I'm a big proponent of buy once, cry once. There's a lot of people who like to restore planes. I've done videos on restoring planes, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're first getting started and you're really on a budget. The Lee Nielsen or the Veritas planes can get quite pricey. I think this is $325, same about with the Veritas. But I did, on the low angle, I got this Stanley Sweetheart one. I'll, I'll leave a link to all of these down in the description, but I, I got started with this Stanley, and honestly, especially if you're having a tough time planning, like you just can't figure it out, go watch my smoothing video, but a low angle jack will make you feel like you know what you're doing. It really is kind of a great beginner's plane. It does lots of different things, and really makes you feel like you're, you're kind of doing a better job, because hand planes can be pretty frustrating when you first get started. Um, so I did, I really enjoyed the Stanley Sweetheart low angle, but I love this Lee Nielsen so much more that I really wish I'd bought it first and not just spent 130 on this one. One thing I really like about the Lee Nielsen besides its build quality and the fact that they come ground flat and all that, you have to do very little work to get it ready to plane, uh, is they have some grooves cut into the frog that help align your plane iron so that it's square to the body of the, of the plane. Uh, the Stanley Sweetheart does have an adjustment lever and it, it does come with A2 tool steel, which is really good. All the new Stanleys do. It's a, a great tool steel because it stays sharp much, much longer. It's also harder to sharpen because it's a harder steel, so it takes longer to get a grind going, but uh, great plane. So that's what I would start off with. And then from there, what I would do, because you can set up your number four as a smoother and a scrub plane, this could be a smoother as well as a heavy removal item. And then of course your block plane is your best all around go-to guy. I would get a number six or a number seven. Now these can be very expensive, brand new. I have not bitten the bullet and gotten a big one yet because typically you're not using them for fine planing. I mean, you're just using them to get something straight. And then from there, you're gonna go to a smoother and get it nice. So for a big plane, I don't recommend going nuts unless you got some money in your pocket that you wanna burn. Uh, I got this number six off eBay for $40 and I did no more than sharpen it and the thing is a champion. I have it set up with the frog moved a little bit forward. So it's for lighter stock removal, but it gets stuff really clean, really smooth, and it was a great purchase. I love this thing, I use it all the time. And then surprisingly, this cheap one that I bought off Amazon, again, I'll, I'll leave a link, works great for jointing. It's a big old beast, number seven. As long as you keep the plain iron sharp, it, it's really good. You could even replace the plain iron uh, with something nicer, but it's it gets the job done. And like I said, you're not trying to make stuff look nice when you're using a number seven, you're just trying to get it flat. And so that if you're gonna save money somewhere, that's a great place. Um, other planes that I absolutely love, this Lee Nielsen rabbiting block plane is by far my favorite plane uh, that I've ever owned. It is so cool. It's a pain in the butt to sharpen because it doesn't fit in a jig and uh, it, it because of the shape of the iron, it's kind of weird to do by hand. And so it, it's a pain in the butt to sharpen. It doesn't have an adjustable mouth, but it is so, versatile it has knickers on the side so when you're using it as a rabbiting plane it severs the fibers ahead of the blade so you don't get tear out so i use this for cleaning up rabbits all the time and then it's a great all-around plane it's a2 tool steel it holds its edge forever so if you want to spend some money uh, on something that you're going to love the lee nielsen rabbiting block plane it does everything a block plane does except it doesn't have an adjustable mouth, so when it comes to like super smoothing operations, you could. this is gonna tear out more than that, although it doesn't, it's not like a big problem not having it, but uh, it's, the other part that's hard about it has no lateral adjustment, so it's a little tough to get aligned. Um, I just use a hammer and kind of knock it on both sides, but again, if you're gonna, spend some money on a good block plane, go with the Lee Nielsen rabbiting block plane. And then from there, this Lee Nielsen smoother, this number four is awesome. Really great plane, but it is certainly a luxury item. Um, the, these kind of things I would buy towards the end of your collection because they don't add anything to your arsenal that you can't already do, but they certainly are a luxury item when you're trying to get buttery smooth surfaces on like walnut, maple, cherry, really, really cool. Um, the, the next plane that I would buy in my collection is a router plane. Uh, these are great for doing hinge mortises, 
uh, for cleaning out the bottoms of grooves where you can't really get anything else to clean it up. Uh, these are really, really versatile. There's, uh, I used to have an inexpensive one I got on Amazon. It got the job done. It obviously wasn't as nice as this Lee Nielsen. It comes with an edge guide and you can get different size blades for it, but this is a phenomenal plane and the next one I would buy in my collection. These number threes I just got because I, they don't really do anything that a number four can't do. You know, if you're doing some fine stuff, it's great, but you don't need them. Uh, that's not something I would buy unless you're kind of into collecting them like I am. Uh, I just like them because they're fun to use. They're little. I can just pick it up and do a couple things really quick. And it's cool to kind of have all the numbers, I think. Uh, I'm still looking for a number two and number one, but those are crazy expensive and big collector's items. So if anybody wants to send me one, feel free. Uh, my address is in the about section. This is a great ShopFox plane. Uh, it's less than $100. You can get it on Amazon delivered in two days. It's a rabbiting plane. It's a bullnose plane, so you can get right up to the edges of stuff, and a chisel plane, so you can get right in the corners. It's uh, There's an Allen key in here. It's a simple adjustment. You just switch it out, and it's, it's a great plane. Uh, I would highly recommend putting that into your collection if you've gotten to this point. And then from there, you know, get into your sort of specialty planes, which would be like the Lee Nielsen smoother. Uh, this is a Stanley number four smoother I have, which to be honest, I think I said it in the, the plane setup video. It's just not my favorite plane. It's bulky. The adjustments are loose on it. Uh, you know, it, in the smoothing plane video we just released, we did get it to get ultra smooth shavings and we got it to perform well, but Again, it's great if you don't want to spend the, the $275 for a Lee Nielsen or a Veritas. And you can definitely tune it up really well, but it takes a lot of tuning up when you get it to get it to work. Uh, and then from there, you can get some kind of mid-sized planes like the five and a half that will be in between jointing and smoothing. You can kind of cover larger areas of things and get a little bit of a better surface as you work your way down the planes and you're trying to get a finish ready surface. All in all, hand planes are great. If you're a hand tool only woodworker, of course, this is gonna be something that you really invest in. But if you're a power tool hybrid woodworker like me who uses hand planes to sort of round out the experience and sort of work in between things that power tools can't get to, or you know, if I have a type of wood that is having a tough time with the machines and I need to do something slower and kind of get it perfect without having to just sand for two hours, that's when I bust out the hand planes. So we're gonna dive deeper into the hand plane arena over the next couple weeks. We're gonna talk about how to tune up a plane. Uh, we already talked about how to set up a smoother, so we'll talk about how to set up a scrub plane and a jointing plane. I'm gonna share with you what I know about hand planes and hopefully that helps you make more educated decisions about what to purchase and also what it is that you want out of your hand planes. It's so important. When someone asks me which one they should buy, I say, well, what do you like to do? Because that makes a big difference. Depending on what you do is where I would spend my money. And there's no right or wrong answer for different people, but it's just important that you make the decisions that are going to have the most value for your woodworking. So uh, guys, I hope you found this informative. If you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, we'd love to have you. Thanks for watching guys. Stay safe in the shop. I'll see you next time.